Ooh, what's going on everybody? This is Jen, catching you on my downtime. Hope you're all having a great day. I don't know if you can see me or not. It is nighttime. Yes, I'm testing out my camera at nighttime to see if it actually shoots me. Here. We got black ice. Not cool. Nice shiny stuff that you could possibly bust your ass on. <laughs> Reminds me of a joke that I came up with um, when um, that one, uh, what do you call it, <sighs> that one snowstorm happened, or it was supposedly going to be a snowstorm, and that was uh, not too long after Hurricane Sandy had hit, and I was out in my backyard trying to shovel snow, and I literally slipped and fell and just busted my ass, dude. I would have laughed my ass off and got back up, and I would have thought it was funny, but I couldn't get up for like the first minute or so, first two or three minutes. I don't know how long I was laying there, but I was scared as fuck, because it hurt so bad I couldn't even move. It turned out that I pulled some muscles in my leg that that uh, incident, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I thought I broke my leg or something because I couldn't move for like the first few minutes. I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> I was like, hey mom, can we go to the hospital? She's like, no, it's not broken. I'm like, how do you know that? She's like, you were able to get up and come over to me to ask me, right? I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Never really broken anything in my entire life except my nose. But I knew it was broken and, well, you know. I never actually fell and busted my ass and possibly broke something else. You know what I mean? So kind of freaked me out. Turned out all I had to do was just go to my uh, local clinic and um, get a doctor's note, stay off it for a few days, maybe a week or so, which I did. But, uh, I was working uh, for a parking company part-time at the time, and uh, my boss didn't really like the idea that my medical information is personal and that he couldn't get an answer as to why I had to uh, be out of work for so long, but honestly, according to the law, that's none of his fucking business. And uh, what got me is uh, how much he pushed for that information. He, look at that, intersection, woo, sorry, ADD moment, Connie Evan Midland F, but anyway, he ended up uh, literally getting me to call the doctor's office from the office, uh, from the location that I was working at, and he had me put him on the phone with the doctor to ask them himself. <laughs> I'm like, wow, <laughs> Whew, that's a lot of gall and audacity just because you can't, can't get information that you're not privy to. I thought that was fucked up in itself that he had me call the fucking doctor's office, but then uh, he had to cut back my hours. And I was already working part time to begin with, but then he cut my. Ugh, it's cold. He cut back my hours even more. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Just because I called out and you didn't get the answers that you wanted from my doctor? That ain't right. I don't know who the fuck does that shit, but I'm glad I don't work there anymore. Um. Oh, did I say that out loud? That sounded so good in my head. Despite all that, I still visit the location and talk with everybody, even him. Because, you know, I, I really believe in keeping the peace and not holding grudges as far as stupid shit goes. But, yeah. <laughs> I just thought that I'd walk and talk with you guys about whatever the hell came to my mind. But anyway, I made a joke about that. I said, you know you're in your 30s if, fill in the blank, fall on your ass and bust it while shoveling snow. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting old. <laughs> but anyway, I'm on the way to the store so that I can get some stuff. I am back. You were catching me on my downtime. Again. Hoping you're all having a great day. officially have returned to Facebook. Now, it's been a long time since I've been on Facebook, or what feels to be a long time, actually about a total of like two months or so. 
um, since I've been on Facebook. And the reason why I did not want to be on Facebook is because, number one, I wanted to get refocused and not remain distracted or addicted to some stupid fucking website that's going to just suck up my time. I would be happier being more productive, and I think, you know, what helps me to be productive is surrounding myself by people who are pretty much doing the same stuff that I'm doing, and maybe people who aren't, so what, just people who are uplifting, um, just really cool, down-to-earth freaking people, man. I waited to get back on Facebook because I had been, I had already been so damn sick of all these fake-ass fucking people <laughs> on my shit. I'm like, I already know you don't give a shit about me. And even if you act like you do, you probably talk behind my back. And if you're not talking behind my back, you probably just have no interest in my life whatsoever. So why the f*** are you on my wall? Like, why are you my friend if you're not really my friend? I wanted to find a status update that I actually wrote. And it reads, first downside of getting back onto Facebook, an obsessed ex you decide never to speak to again messages you. Oh my god, just let me go! Just let me go already! My god, my god, it's the, oh, the lord and lady be so good to me, just let me go! I already let you go. If I were hooked up to a machine and you were my illness, I would literally threaten the doctor's life just to antagonize him to pull the motherfucking plug. Yes! I said that shit. On my Facebook wall, made it public, cause goodness knows, everybody has at least one of those motherfucking obsessive ass fucking exes that will not leave you the fuck alone. It does not matter how many years pass, it does not matter how many times shit did not work out, this motherfucker will not leave you alone. And I'm sorry for cursing in this video, but this stuff bothers me. I'm smoking too. Yeah. But, uh, stuff like that happens to people, not just me. So, I mean, for all the, for all the obsessed exes out there who don't know how to let your ex go, seriously, do yourself a favor. Reassess your life, okay? I had already reassessed mine, and I'm making steps toward building a better quality of life for myself. Okay? If you cannot let somebody else go, chances are it is not about that person. It's about something that's going on in you that makes you not want to let this person go. When they've already done let you go. When they've already said, bye-bye, don't return. I'm sorry I told you that you didn't, that, that you missed the first time and, you know, you're back. Oh, God. Reassess what is going on in your life. Okay? By doing that, you can figure out exactly why you're still extremely attached to this person that clearly wants nothing to do with you. So, once you've assessed what that is, you can then begin to start working on that, and that from that point on, you can start healing. Okay, that's where the healing begins. I just wanted to point that out and put that out there on video. For anybody who's watching, that actually may be an obsessive ex. And I'm not making jokes here. I'm not trying to be funny about this, alright? If you're somebody who's obsessing over somebody that clearly wants nothing to do with you, do yourself a favor and try to assess your life, what you feel is missing in it. Do not say that it's a person, okay? Never say that it's a person, because it always has something to do with you. What is it that you are not allowing into your life that makes you feel so empty, like... <clears throat> You have this void that you cannot fill so much so you have to follow a person around and not let them go. What makes you feel that way? What makes you feel so empty you cannot let a person go? Figure out what that is. I can't do it for you. Only you can do that for yourself. Okay? Do that. That's the first step. Second step. Once you recognize what that thing is, try to fill your life up with that thing, with that thing that you feel that you are devoid of. That, that thing could very well be as generic as happiness. And happiness is not generic by any means. It's actually very complex 
has a lot of components to it. It is not just a one-dimensional thing. Happiness can mean anything to anybody. All right, if that's something that you're looking for, okay, try to find that happiness with something else and not in a person. Um, if you are somebody who is obsessed with somebody and cannot let them go, or if you are somebody who is dealing with an obsessive ex that will not let you go, your first step, do not put that person down, okay? Don't insult the person for having troubles in their life, because goodness knows we all go through problems, all right? Don't judge the person or put that, put that person down. Granted, it is a scary situation to have somebody who is that obsessed with you and will not let you go. All right, I know that that is a scary thing to deal with because you don't know where this person is from, coming from and what they are liable to do next. But what you could do is avoid, okay, judging that person, making fun of that person, trying to make a spectacle of that person because it's not going to make you a better person by doing that. That's the first step. Second step, create distance. By any means whatsoever, do not respond to this person. Make it clear that you want nothing to do with this person. Do not respond. If this person sends you an email, a text, uh, they call, they find you. <laughs> Avoid the motherfucker. Like, cross the street, run. <laughs> do what you gotta do. But the point of the matter is, is that step two is creating that distance. Show that person that you are serious about the decision that you made. That being, you do not want that person in your life ever again. To recap, the first step is to not judge that person or make fun of that person for going through the problems that they are. Everybody faces problems. Do not judge. Because by doing that, you allow yourself to become extremely petty and if somebody happens to catch that petty side of you, they might laugh and think it's cute for a bit, but they're like, oh my god, you know, how shallow is this person? Why, why would I want to date her or him? Don't do that, okay? Everybody has their struggles. So try to refrain from, you know, being insecure about it by making fun of that person and making that person a spectacle. That's not what you want to do. Number two, create distance. Make sure that you create healthy distance to tell this person you 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 probably already told this person hey listen i don't want to do i don't want to have anything to do with you yet this person had come back regardless even if time had gone by that person had still come back to you left a message called whatever don't respond to them you already told them once once is good enough create some distance and no, don't just tell that person, show that person. Show that person you mean business and that you want nothing to do with them for the rest of your life. That's it. It's over. Cut. Next scene, next chapter. Okay? Show them that. Because if you keep feeding the fire or you keep filling that void that I was talking about that this person has, they're going to keep coming to you for it. Even if you're being negative, even if you're calling them names or yelling at them, even if you're pissed at them, they will still keep coming back to you because for some reason, you responding to them actually fills a void for them. They want that contact with you, even if, <laughs> even if it's horrible. They want that. I don't know why, but they do. Uh, to them, somehow, it fills, it, it fills up a void. They're like, oh my god, this person's back in my life now. They're talking to me. You know, may, maybe, we can, maybe we can push through this. All this negativity and nastiness that's going on. Don't give them that opportunity if you mean business. Create distance. Do not speak to that person. Move on. Next chapter. Anyway. I don't know what the rest of the steps are because I'm still going through this myself. So I'm hoping, I'm honestly hoping that what I'm saying in this video is helping somebody. So thank you for watching this video. It's been my downtime, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace out.